with our constituents on social media. Um, some of the stuff we've been doing for worship resources, we've been uh, kind of going through our songbook and uh, just recording all of the music. We've also been doing um, children's messages based on the lectionary. And um, I think that at the end of this week, we're going to be putting up our uh, Bible study as well for, for adults. it will be a five-day piece um, up there as well. And then, of course, we've been doing camp worships every uh, Wednesday night and Sunday night at 630. So those are up on the website as well. In terms of reaching out uh, with our uh, constituents, uh, we've just been po trying to post and, and connect with people in fun and different ways on Facebook and Instagram. Um, we've done everything from Throwback Thursdays, where we kind of uplift, uh, you know, past or present pictures or things that, uh, that we've done as a camp. Um, we've also and done other theme days, Make It Mondays, um, Gratification Tuesdays or Gratitude Days, we call it. Uh, but we also have done challenges as well. Um, we actually have a uh, camp song challenge right now, kind of finish the lyric going on for people to participate in. And we've been getting good responses from folks. Um, it's fun to just kind of see the comments and people making the connections and, and who is making the connections. Uh, lots of past staff are just kind of chiming in every once in a while and, and uh, you know, oh, I remember that or, oh, I hadn't thought about that in a while. And it's really cool to to see and hear that as well. So, so that's pretty much what we've been doing up to this point. Um, in terms of uh, kind of the other side, we've been doing a little bit of building projects as well. And so um, we actually have the foundation down for our brand new garage um, that's going to be happening just uh, kind of south of the volleyball court. Um, and we just got our shipment of walls for that too. So the hope is to, by the end of the summer here, um, sometime in the middle of August, we're going to put the walls up and enclose it so then we can start putting that together. Um, and then we also just took delivery of a uh, donated uh, human foosball cord as well. So we're going to be piecing that together um, and trying to find a sp space for that. It's kind of big. It's 40 feet by 20 feet. So we're going to have to find some space where to put it. But it's going to be a really fun new thing for camp and a new thing for cabins to try out during their cabin time or even during um, canteen time out here at camp. So that's what I have to share for you. That's fun. Um, Taylor, how can we pray for Pathways? I think one way you can pray for Pathways is um, pray for the staff, for their energy and for their um, gifts that they've been kind of um, showing through this uh, content that they're creating. Um, it's certainly been a challenge for them. Uh, many of them having prior camp experience, um, you know, working with kids and getting their energy from working with kids. Um, to then kind of come into this summer and uh, embrace a whole new skill set of all the video editing and all of the um, footage that we're doing. So um, praying for them and, and, and uplifting them. And they love hearing um, that what they're doing is making a difference too. So if by any means um, you like something or you uh, really appreciate something that they're doing, please let me know or let them know in the comments on the videos. And uh, uh, I've been making a habit of trying to read that off to them because that's been uplifting for them and gives them the energy to kind of push forward. So you can just keep them in their, in your prayers uh, as we move forward the last couple of weeks here. Thank you, Taylor. Anyone have any questions for Taylor? All right. Um, if you do, you can um, put them in the chat or whatever. Um, but then I'm going to call on Madeline Elliott. Wow, thank you for using my full legal name. Hi, everyone. I'm Maddie, or Madeline. And um, so I serve as the Associate Director at Luther Crest. And um, thanks, Chris, for uh, asking us to jump on. I uh, really appreciate it. Would love to give you an update on, I, I mean, a while ago, I told you that we were going to do this BTF program. Some of you are participating, so that's super fun. Um, and I thought I would just give you a quick update on, on how that's going. Um, we, we have found that it's been really fruitful and the feedback that we've gotten from parents and campers is, uh, is good. They, they enjoyed taking time each week to spend on uh, faith formation and um, connecting with um, new friends and cool camp counselors. And so we're, we're, really, we're really glad that we put energy forth um, to do that. And we, we've gleaned a lot of resources on how to do online small group ministry. So um, that has been a huge, a huge success for us. And then like Taylor was saying, I mean, it was a great opportunity to get 
um, videos of some of the like classic camp things that we've got going on. We've often been asked if, if we have videos of the favorite camp songs. And lo and behold, we had a summer to record everyone's favorite camp songs and, and skits and things like that. Um, so that's been really, really fun and, and life-giving. Um, the staff are continuing to do that work. So we have all of our faith formation leaders, which uh, camp counselors, um, we call them faith formation leaders. They, um, they are deployed. So they're all in their homes um, out, in the, out in the world. And then they uh, facilitate these small group meetings and then make um, Grover videos or like Camper Choice activity videos um, and then send those in. So those, are, those can be found on our website and on YouTube. Um, and then they facilitate those small groups. They're, they're super stellar. And then we have a group um, of leadership staff um, that are on site um, doing some more, more videos and worships and things like that while they're here. And they're also helping us with some cool things that we'll be doing in August when we get the day camp rolling. And some of you are participating in day camp too. So that'll be really fun, a really unique day camp summer. Um, and then uh, just uh, coming up, we've got some stuff in the works. So because we've done this BTF program and we found a lot of success with it, we have um, just under 700 folks participating with BTF. And um, we, we've learned a lot and we wanna share those resources. So we're putting together some, some stuff that uh, we can send out to people, um, you guys included, um, to, to help share what we've learned. And uh, I mean, I know some of you were doing um, online stuff in the in the spring, but if you if you weren't, or if you know of a congregation that maybe doesn't have a resource person um, working on faith formation, um, send them our way because we've got some really great things that we could share and help help people out. So we're really excited about that. Um, and then we we planned summer 2021, and um, it is it is happening. We feel really certain that we will be able to welcome people on site once again, but it's going to look a lot different. Um, and so the recommendations right now. If, there are not, if there's not a vaccine, um, is, is that you operate at half capacity if you're a summer camp. And so um, that is uh, really painful to take in um, because we've been operating at, at full capacity. That's one of the uh, blessings that we've been given these past few years. Um, so we're figuring out ways that we can make room for everyone to be at camp, even if that looks a little bit different. Um, for 2021. And um, the registration process will be a little bit different. We've typically opened it in November. We think we're going to open it in January uh, because we think people will have a better understanding of their summer in, in January and they'll feel more confident um, moving, moving into the spring about making summer plans um, since we all know how making summer plans went this summer. So we want to just be sensitive to where people are at. So that's kind of our plan there. Um, prayers for us. Um, as we move into uh, the, the season of fall, um, we're making large transitions with our, with our staffing. Um, so to, to make sure that we can do a summer camp season in 2021 and hold on to all of our, our, our staff members, um, we're just making some, some movement. So we're partnering with some congregations um, to share some faith formation activities in a staffing way, as well as in a um, in a uh, package kind of way. So um, some unique things going on um, and it's gonna stretch our people uh, a little bit. And so um, you can just pray uh, for that transition to go smoothly and uh, for the spirit to still lead through, through all of that. Um, we're, looking, we're looking forward to it, but it's just a, a, new, a new thing that's, um, that's campaigning. And I was gonna say, I was gonna say one more thing. Oh, this is what I was gonna say. We are still doing family rentals of cabins um, and that's been a really fun way to get people on site. So the, the one way that we can host folks physically on site is if they are the same household um, or like the same bubble, you know, like everyone kind of has their bubble that they have been living in. And so we've been hosting groups um, to come and, and do camp activities and live in our, in our cool, nice air conditioned cabins. And um, it's, been, it's been really fun. And we're gonna continue to do that um, all the way into the fall. It's one of the one ways that we know we can serve folks. Um, so uh, if you have people that are looking for a getaway um, or want to encourage your, your families to take some time to come to camp and, and be with nature and maybe unplug for a little bit, though we do have Wi-Fi, so if they want to plug in, they could plug in. Uh, that, would be, that would be super um, and would help us out a lot. So yes, any questions? <laughs>
Not a question, but um, just a quick moment of praise. After listening to the things that you're doing at Luthercrest and the things that I know are happening at Pathways and that Taylor just shared about now, like you guys make my head spin. You're doing some really awesome stuff this summer. Like way to go. As my dad would say, don't throw out your shoulder patting yourself on the back. No. <laughs> But you should pat yourselves on the back. Um, Taylor, can you speak to, I thought I read about like small groups coming to camp. Can you speak to that at all? Is that happening? Yeah, so one thing that we have um, as an offering going forward, um, and this is, uh, we basically just kind of moved our retreat season up. Um, typically we've done retreats uh, over a weekend, over a span of days, um, but right now for the summertime, we're doing um, day retreats. So um, if, say uh, a family or a group uh, wants to come out to camp and have um, an experience and just be at camp. Um, they can certainly come out for the day. Uh, we typically are going to run it sometime between nine to four. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a good opportunity to kind of come out. We recognize that there are families and there are um, youth groups and people that want to be out at camp. Um, but you know, at this, at this point in time, we're not a hundred percent confident about our ability to, um, have people stay overnight. We're kind of, um, slowly moving into that, uh, realm, but for now we're doing day retreats. So we basically just moved our retreat calendar up to right now. So, so yes, by all means, if you're, um, if you're, uh, trying to think of things, um, for your youth group, uh, places to go and be and do activities, uh, by all means, if you want to come out to camp for a day, um, we'd be more than happy to host you. Thank you. Um, so digging in to some of the, the stuff right now. So yesterday, the ELCA Youth Gathering announced that they are postponing um, to 2022. Um, sharing my screen. Da, 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 da. Um, so, um, it, um, I, as the Synod coordinator for our Synod, will be having a meeting probably in the next couple of weeks um, to like learn some more, but just to kind of go over some of the frequently asked questions. So you all have the information that you need. So it was switched to July, late July of 2022. Um, some of um, the people who will be able to attend are those who will be in eighth and 12th grade in 21. So like the same age bracket, they aren't like expanding it to go over because the people who would be seniors this fall already had the opportunity. So, but they're encouraging those. They encourage you that weren't eligible, are not eligible to attend to look at some of the volunteer opportunities. Um, they're making the decision now because um, high risk, like, you know, it's hard to even do anything right now. So it's just safer um, and it's easier to make the decision now. Um, the date changes, they, it was the only week that the convention center in US Bank Stadium was available. Um, so they said, okay. Um, the price change, um, you know, the registration cost will be the same, but they're anticipating the hotel prices to be a little bit cheaper um, because of it was over a holiday weekend. It was the 4th of July weekend um, for this next summer. How things will be different, they're still figuring that stuff out. Um, but I know the safety and security, and I know all the teams um, we'll work really hard at um, making sure that it's the safest way to do a gathering. Um, they'll work on logos and promo stuff. The next gathering will be in 24. So it will be a quick turnover. So they'll go back to being on, on the three, like the track. So it'll be a quick turnover. Um, so, and then one thing like people are that some of the questions that came up on the um, 
coordinators thing where people parents being worried about Minneapolis and all the news that was going on in Minneapolis um, earlier this summer. And so they had a lot of questions. So they just addressed this here. Is it postponed because of the murder of George Floyd and all the current um, the rioting and all that? It's no because of COVID-19, um, but they'll continue to work with law enforcement. And when I was speaking to Bishop Bill about this, I said, well, it will give people more time to realize that like defunding the police in Minneapolis doesn't mean the mall, like making the police department non-existent in Minneapolis anymore. And so I'll give some parents, I think, time to like see what it really is like, but right, like New Orleans is not the safest place, right? Um, St. Louis, Detroit, and then I found out from Heidi Hagstrom, who was the program director before Molly Bechti, and she's like, actually Atlanta was like the sketchiest city that we had a gathering in. I was like, oh, good thing I didn't know that when I had, when Sarah and I, Sarah was in my small group, and not a kid in my small group, but a kid in the church group, like, wandered off, and <laughs> he made his way back to the hotel, because pre-cell phone, oh, whatever. Wow. <laughs> oh, Brock. Um, so, uh, yeah, this will give us time for fundraising. Um, that I know a lot of churches do um, stuff over summer, stuff over Lent, and so this will give um, time to refocus on that um, and to figure out the new reality of what church finances and personal finances are too, right? Because the world is upside down right now um, on a lot of things. So that's what I have for the ELCA Youth Gathering right now. Um, once I get more information after I have that Synod Coordinator meeting, I will um, plan an informational meeting for all of you um, to keep you in the loop. But 2022, that's like weird to say, blah. but um, plan for the end of July, get your people excited. Um, Northwestern Minnesota has been in the top 10 for participants, but we've been living around number eight and I love to like bump that up um, and I'm excited about it. So um, yeah, um, something that you don't have to have in the forefront of your mind, something you can actually put in a newsletter that's concrete, right? And set, you know, instead of being like, I don't know what's going on. Um, so yeah, something concrete. Um, more locally speaking, the LYO adults um, met, what day was that? Tuesday? Monday? I don't know. Earlier this week. And um, we started talking about Synod Youth Gatherings. Um, we will do some sort of virtual thing for the middle schoolers. Um, we aren't sure what capacity it will be right now because we're still in the um, figuring out phases. But my hope is that um, for congregations like yours that have staff people, um, you could use it like as a youth group or as something. Um, and then for congregations that don't have staff, um, because I'm very aware of congregations that don't have awesome people like you um, walking with them and helping them um, to have that be a, like a confirmation opportunity or something like that. Um, further down the pipeline, um, when it's safe, Bishop Bill and I kind of want to take a confirmation roadshow. Um, so hitting up every com conference, so the eight conferences, and kind of do a confirmation night um, sort of thing. Um, so, but that won't be for a while when we can actually like be together, but that's something um, that we're starting to dream up. I'm excited about that. Um, yeah, and then for senior high, the LYO board is focusing right now on the middle school to make sure that it's quality. Um, that's really important to us. And so for senior high, we'll probably do something um, later on in the winter after the first of the year, um, but maybe uh, like a small group opportunity. The ELCA did a great job with young adults and with youth 
doing in small groups. Um, so uh, maybe something like that, but um, we're going to focus on middle school first um, and then do something special for senior high because senior high um, students have really had to miss a lot of special things to them. So we want to make sure that what we do for them is um, age appropriate and appropriate for what's going on in the world and safe. Um, so that's sort of the plan right now for those gatherings. One thing I want to lift up. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Um, we have um, a neat opportunity for senior high students. It was in yesterday's Northern Lights. I'll share the screen. Um, so it's a discernment event for senior high students. Um, and it starts next Wednesday and it's for all of region three. So if you have any high schoolers that are wondering about ministry or wondering about um, calling in life or whatever, um, message me and I'll make sure you get this information. Um, or if you get the Northern Lights, you have that stuff. But I, there, um, Krista Anderson, who's our Region 3 candidacy person, um, has been working hard to make sure that this is um, worth your time and all of that. So it's the next three Wednesdays um, for an hour via Zoom um, for all of Region 3. And then I think they invited Nebraska into. Um, so it will, they have some great people to share about ministry. So there's that. Um, I'm throwing just a lot of information at you. Um, so, faith formation. All right. So there's this fun thing. It is the 2021 Planning Guide for Schools, right? I read a lot of these guidances, so you don't have to. But if you wanted to read it, it Google Minnesota school, whatever. Um, you all know how to Google. Um, it is 16 pages. Um, but one thing they speak to, and this was written a while ago, um, is the different scenarios. So scenario one is in-person learning with social distancing. Scenario two is hybrid with capacity limits and social distancing. And scenario three is distance only. Um, I watched Governor Walt's um, press conference yesterday when he made the executive order 2081. Um, saying that masks are, face masks are mandated starting Friday at midnight. So I like, like, I don't go anywhere, right? But like, I can't imagine like at the bar at midnight on Friday, people will be like, oh, time to put on my mask. Um, but so Saturday morning, face masks will be um, required um, in all public spaces indoors for employees outside. Um, so I wrote a guidance for congregations for them to ask questions before meeting indoor in person for worship. Um, so I started and it's only a draft right now. But because I've been living in guidance, um, I wanted to start something. So these are the questions um, that I think would be good for you if you have like a faith formation committee, um, whatever, just like start. And this is a draft, so it's not like the official one yet. Um, but the first question, have you spoken to your congregation's insurance provider regarding liabilities and protocols? And do you have a plan to implement the insurance protocols? Um, I've learned that many in um, congregations insurance have like a pandemic clause that they don't cover anything for a pandemic. Um, so that's a fun clause. 
Um, also, I've heard that other congregations have a clause in their liability that if they don't follow things to a T, um, then they won't cover. So like if the CDC and the um, Minnesota Department of Health requires face masks and you don't say like you have to wear a face mask and then someone gets sick and sues, the insurance won't cover it. Does that make sense? Um, so know what your insurance will cover. Do you have a smart team and a designated um, plan administrator that is not your rested leader, Sam or council president? Um, so I did a survey and I found out that of 110 rostered leaders, a third of them have smart teams. A third of them are going to have a smart team but don't have one yet. And a third, does, a third of them do not have smart teams at all. Um, so a smart team is people that know what's going on in your community because like we know in our state and in even our synod, um, it's different, right? So right now there's a big surge in Beltrami County, um, which is where Bemidji is. Um, the county I'm in has been like living at a high number for a while. Um, so like it just, it varies. And so one thing that we found is important to know what's going on locally. Um, so there's that. And then I added, does your SMART team include someone from your local school district, an administrator or teacher? Um, does your congregation have a policy in place for faith formation that is in alignment with the school district? Um, so uh, like at Glendon Lutheran, we officially wrote a policy that went along with the schools for like winter storms. Um, and so, but with that, it would go really well with whatever scenario the schools do. Um, have you, do you know which scenario, one, two, or three, your school district is going with? So in the um, press conference yesterday, it sounded like Governor Waltz wanted school to happen. Um, and that's why the mask mandate is happening um, now is to hopefully make it safe by the time school would start. Um, they are going to make the call next week on what it is. Um, North Dakota, our friends to the west, um, said that every school district gets to choose what's best for them. Um, and so I kind of just wrote number four, as thinking that that's what's going to happen because our state is so um, varied on different things. Um, have you met with your education youth faith formation committees to discuss how to handle faith formation? Um, can you shift your faith formation rooms to allow for social distancing? Do you have what you need to clean and disinfect your building, including classrooms and restrooms? Um, I was at Target this morning and um, cleaning supplies are not there anymore. They were there for a while and I know it's hit and miss, but um, do you have what you need? Um, have you checked your building for hazards from prolonged shutdown, reduced operation? Um, that is part of the church thing, but if you haven't been using your building at all, there are certain things to make sure about water and all of that. Um, building and ventilation is important. Um, one thing that like literally woke me up in the middle of the night and like had to like breathe myself down was, have you considered how you will safely use classroom items like scissors, glues, crayons, markers? Um, ah. <laughs> like, I remember my supply room and like just a tub full of crayons, you know, like do you have, if you're going to meet in person, do you have a plan for how to handle supplies? Um, do you have face masks, tissues, hand sanitizer available for anyone as needed? Do you have ushers, greeters that will make sure that if someone appears sick or as at risk that they leave? Um, that would be a job that I would not want, right? Like, I would not want to tell somebody to leave church, but that's 
the, the Minnesota Department of Health for Churches. Um, that's part of one of their steps. Um, do you have signs posted at your entrances and throughout the building? Um, do you have protocols for managing occupancy? Um, that goes right now for worship spaces, it's 50% occupancy. I don't know how classrooms would be um, because I haven't seen anything for that, but I'm assuming it would be the social distance thing. Um, Minnesota schools under scenarios one and two require symptom checks and recommend temperature screening. Um, but that's for school. But if um, we're going to uphold what the school does, that's what they're doing. And then do you have a plan for those who plan on staying home because they or someone in their household is at risk. Um, so that was just sort of initial thoughts, taking some of the stuff away from what I wrote up for like indoor in person worship um, and then tweaking it with some of the school stuff. So it's not final by any means. And um, you, uh, I really wrote this for all those congregations that don't have staff members like you. But then I thought the, this could be helpful for you to take to your committees to be like at least a starting point to be like, how are we going to figure out scissors? You know, like, how are we going to, you know, figure out all this stuff? So, um, yeah, I wanted to share that information with you. Um, have any of you started thinking about stuff? Are you all just waiting for next week? Like, um, why don't share? I want to hear from you. We have met as an education and youth committee um, and talked a little bit about it. And we do want to honor everyone's level of comfort. I sent out a survey to my families and the families who responded are anywhere from like, yeah, let's get started again. We want to see people to no, I think we're going to stay home till there's a vaccine, which I kind of expected. Um, so we'll provide some online content for them. And we have not started doing any indoor worship. We've done one outdoor worship service a month so far and our smart team just met earlier this week for the first time it's our mutual ministry team because it has reps from all four um, congregations and then we've looked at those questions and now we're going back to like our leadership team within those four to talk about those questions for reopening to in-person worship um, so we haven't really made a huge decision but we are waiting also to hear what schools are gonna do and like we follow suit with providing online content too, just to make sure we're getting everyone involved in some way. Um, I posted in the Northern Lights yesterday, um, Spark House is offering a discount for their digital curriculum for three months. Um, and they're having a lot of helpful things, so yeah. And then Sarah, I just saw your question. It will be available, I'm hopefully um, gonna have it by the end of the week. So you going into like whenever the schools make their thing, there's at least something, right? And then I can I can always tweak it. We can call it like edition one and edition, you know. But um, yes, so it could be a living document. Yeah, it lives. Yeah, this is uh, Kristen. Uh, please forgive me. I'm cooking lunch and my daughter is in the kitchen. So on Tuesday morning, um, Corey went to school for her summer services, and she had a temperature. And in three minutes, our little school lost two employees for a minimum of three days, and my household now is waiting the results of our COVID test. And so as we think about what that actually practically looks like, um, um, there are some just real world implications for, for staff and for families and to think about how do we um, inform everyone. So I've had to go back and, and every day since Tuesday, I'd like, oh yeah, I have to contact this person because we, we were in contact with them. And so, um, so that, that piece about one of the things you really need to consider is how do we contact people 
who may have um, been exposed. Um, like, what is your policy for your congregation? Um, I've kind of thrown it out there for ours that if you, just a minute, baby, if you have a, uh, if you, say, if you're tested, being tested for COVID, within seven days of being in our building, you need to let us know. And to just really hammer that, if you have a temp, stay home. If you have these symptoms, stay home. And I know that, like, we don't want to be in the position of policing people. But if I had checked my daughter's temperature at home and kept her home, it would have made a huge difference uh, for not only my life, but for the life of so many people um, moving forward. So I throw that out there as an anecdote. And it's, uh, boy, it's tough. It really truly is. And something I'm going to add to this is like teacher training, right? There'll have to be additional, if you are meeting in person, well, and if you're only meeting online, there needs to be extra different teacher training too. Um, so yeah, I saw Julia. Yeah, I actually have to go on to a, another Zoom call, but I just, I, I don't, I don't have the answer and I, I know we aren't going to, come up with it here. But as we're talking, you know, we're trying to, to frame the picture of what starting with what worship will be like for people with all of the restrictions. And when you list of like, you have to pre-register, you're going to be ushered to a seat. Um, you have to leave as soon as it's over. There's no coffee, no donuts. It all sounds terrible. Um, and so we're like, I'm trying to frame it as like, here's what the experience is going to be if you come. And like, we all want to be together. Like, hands down like I want to see all these people um, but um, trying to figure out then what we can create at home so I'm about 85 percent sure that it will be um, at home even if schools are meeting because I feel like there is this level of exhaustion and anxiety in families um, and I don't want to add to that because church will be the thing that's thrown out because school is school. And so trying to just think outside of the box and I do children's ministry. And so um, I feel like it is different than youth and confirmation stuff, but I am looking at doing like a monthly box for families, which is what we did for VBS. That would be around a theme that would be activities that they could work on when they're available um, and not kind of straying away from that weekly lesson which is what we did last spring and it started off really great and lots of engagement and then as the spring went on um, just parents were interacting with it less and less so um, I also want to um, like think of something completely different because um, I want to be I want to try to create some excitement and hope <laughs> in families of like, we get it, you're not on the screen. And I, in my mind, I think these boxes would include very little screen in engagement um, because there's just gonna be a lot of that either way. So um, I would love to stay on, I do have to go, but uh, prayers for all of you. Uh, this is like, it's exhausting. And like Kristen said, I mean, there's, there's so much to think about and I do not envy our uh, school administrators who are working their tails off. Um, but I want to hear the recording and hear what the rest of you have to say, but just prayers for you as you guys continue to, uh, to walk with your people and whatever that looks like. So I got to go. Sorry. Thank you, Julie. <laughs> yes. We haven't made any plans yet, but all of our conversations have centered around what can we do to make things memorable and exciting for people right now, and not just trying to do what we've always done, but adapt it for this. So um, like Julie just mentioned Vacation Bible School and like how, like we just did that last week, our Vacation Bible School to go and it was kits that they picked up at church and then they got to do stuff at home as a family and it was nothing like vacation bible school in person but it was um kind of a fun experience for them hopefully a fun memory for them as a family 
Um, so that's kind of how we're trying to frame things as we look towards the fall. How can we make this fun and memorable instead of being, well, that's another thing we missed out on, or that's another thing that was different. So instead of letting it be a bummer, but I also don't have any answers. And we, like I said, haven't planned anything. That's just how we're framing our conversations. Um, so as we've been trying to uh, decide with our preparedness planning team, similar to a smart team, um, then um, our, each of the churches that I work with, I'm not sure about other congregations in Deep River, but they were contacted by the school district um, for possible locations for off-site learning. Um, not sure if anybody else's churches have been, um, but um, the church across from my apartment actually used to be a school. So um, I'm guessing they were also contacted, um, but having been a previous school district employee and with preschoolers, I know how germy those little human beings are, especially when they're adorable, their boogers will get everywhere everywhere. Um, if you have not had the joy of working with them, yeah, that's an experience. Um, so just understanding what that risk may be and, but yet wanting, we want normalcy, but figuring out what that may be like and that so we're going to figure out a new normal. And as we're kind of at the end of summer, um, there's just this exhaustion um, from uh, the committees that they're just like, they're done, they're frustrated, they're over this but we're coming on to fall and this means another season like we're literally going into our third season of this pandemic um and so it's looking very different and so i think people have been rattling back and forth the questions of okay if we can't resume for public worship how can we let youth be in our buildings and there's so many protections and guidances for the youth of or for children um and no matter the politics, I mean, we need to keep kids safe. Like, there shouldn't even be a possible fatality percentage. Like, that's just, yeah, anyways. Um, so, I, I don't know if anybody else's churches have been contacted to be used for their facilities, um, but, and we need to discuss that at our next council meetings, how that may look, um, and like, the biggest thing is insurance, what that would cover. So, um, yeah, just wondering what other places what how else can churches be used because they're not sometimes they're public meeting places as well so it's just yeah what are you guys hearing from your communities so i have a message i drafted up over the last couple of days i'm going to be sending out to my faith formation team and i've been reading through some different things i picked up something actually from vibrant faith that I thought was actually quite good. Um, but what I'm looking at it is, is let's, let's take this from a different vantage point in that this is a new opportunity of how we do this. And so how can I, if confirmation is going to be in the whole, how can I make it so that it's both individual faith growth, but also family faith growth at the same time and getting the parents really intertwined in that and is there a possibility, especially for maybe some of our elder members who are kind of cooped up and maybe don't have a ton of visitors, is there an opportunity there for them to be able to connect with some other mentor in faith that's maybe not able to see people? And so that's been something that's kind of been very early on in my brain trying to figure out and trying to reach out to my faith formation team and say, it's time for us to really get thinking about this more. And um, because I need more brains than just mine on this. Um, but I think it's an opportunity to bring the church together in a way that we haven't been together before. I think this really is an opportunity to break down a lot of these natural barriers that we like putting up because people are just so in need, desire to be connected to people. So is there ways that we can think creatively on how you're bringing the church together in small small sections so that when things get to a point where we can, the church comes back stronger than what it was before. So that's kind of what I've been thinking about.
being mindful of time. Um, I, you know, we've been on now for a little over an hour and I know attention spans and lunch is looming. Um, but one thing I wanted to share with you all is that I'm working with Bishop Bill on a panel and a um, document to kind of help guide um, faith formation. And it will be some stuff that will be helpful no matter what season, pandemic or otherwise that we're in, but some stuff especially for this time. Um, we see this as an urgent need, and so we're, we're working on it. So what it will be is a panel to talk about um, curriculum and safety online and um, that sort of thing. And then also um, a document um, like probably Vibrant Faith put out or there's some synods have put out like a document on the sacraments and things like that. So this would be a document to kind of a thing for all churches to use as tidbits, information. So that will be coming soon. Um, be looking at the Synod social media for um, that. And uh, yeah, I think, um, thank you for your time and for your faithful work. Um, and yeah, any other things before I, I pray us up? All right, um, let us pray. Dear God, thank you for this time together. Thank you for these faithful workers who are doing your work in the world. Um, we pray for their young people, um, that they have the food and the safety they need. Um, we pray for school administrators and our government here in Minnesota um, as they prayerfully um, and carefully consider, hopefully prayerfully, but um, carefully consider um, the next steps. Um, I pray for smart teams um, across our synod as they try to do the faithful and right thing. I lift up in prayer our camps, Luther Crest and Pathways. I especially pray for um, their staffs as they are trying to do new things and be faithful to you. Um, thank you for this time um, and help us to remember to breathe. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you all. I appreciate all of you so darn much. Um, and if you have questions, you know how to get a hold of me, or at least I hope hope you know how to get a hold of me. Um, so. Bye. Thanks, Chris. Yep. Mm -hmm.